President Barack Obama apologized last night to those Americans whose health insurance policies have been canceled under Obamacare, under what seemed to be pretty indisputable uh, circumstances of him saying that this would not happen. Now, he's going to apologize. We're going to show you that video. Um, but I think that the language he uses in his apology is quite interesting because he's apologizing, but he's really not copying to what many people see as he was either wrong or lying, whichever way you want to spin it. But let's listen to the video and then we'll judge that. I am sorry that they uh, you know, are finding themselves in this situation based on assurances they got from me. We've got to work hard to make sure that uh, they know uh, we hear them and that we're going to do everything we can uh, to deal with folks who find themselves uh, in a tough position as a consequence of this. Yeah, he goes on to say, uh, we weren't as clear as we needed to be in terms of the changes that were taking place. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with what Obama said. I really don't. I, I think that I'm sorry they're finding themselves in the situation based on assurances they got from me. It meets my standard of pretty good apology because he includes himself. Like, I, mm -hmm. I said something, they got an assurance from me, and they don't have it. So I think it's pretty good. And I, I do think that in the long run, I hope that once we get past the BS with the website and after we, we get past people feeling that he lied about whether or not they can keep their policies, I do think that the results will be what matters. And as he keeps pointing out, and hopefully that message will stick, it, what, what matters in the long run is whether or not you end up with a better insurance policy that actually covers things, that actually protects you in the event of an emergency. Are we sticking to the numbers that I saw last week about the sort of the number of people who will lose their insurance and will really be forced to get one significantly more expensive? It's like three or four percent. I saw percent. like three percent. Yeah, it's yeah. like three percent. I mean, there, there are... And Dylan course, Radigan, apparently one of them. I saw that today. Is that right? It's going to cost like 1.5 to two times as much as before. Mm -hmm. um, so, unfortunate so, for Dylan Radigan. So, that, that's a real issue, even though it's a tiny one. So, so we've clarified this before. People say, hey, you know what, I can't believe I'm forced into a new uh, health insurance, but, uh, but this is just for the individual market. And in the individual market, 83% of people they, wind up... They roll over each year. Yeah, wind up getting new insurance every year anyway. So that's at most would only affect 17% people if all of them were going to keep it. Yeah. And it, so and then for most people, uh, it actually is better coverage and cheaper, yes. right? Because you get subsidized, uh, and, and there's a whole host of issues there. So the overwhelming majority of people will have gotten a new plan anyway. Uh, and of the people who are getting new plans, most of them are getting one that's much better, and either the same price or lower price. Now there are some in this about three to four percent that are getting a new plan and yes it's better in that it covers more but uh, it's more expensive, right? Yeah. And so look, it, that always goes back to the point we made, the number one problem with the Affordable Care Act right from the get-go was that it, it had a possibility of increasing prices, not, be, or not that it, it would increase prices but that it would not control the increase of prices set by private insurance. But so, I, but the question here is, should he even apologized? I mean, I feel like I would have, <laughs> you're not going to be surprised by this, I would have gone over the top. Like, I, I want to apologize, uh, first of all, to the good people living in the 25 states uh, that uh, have Republican governors that will not, to. you know, allow them to uh, use the expanded Medicaid to get much better coverage at a lower price. So I'm sorry that you have draconian Republican governors who rather play politics than get you a better insurance. Uh, I'm uh, sorry that I couldn't do better for the three or four percent of you that have this issue, but we tried. We wanted to put a public option in there. He didn't, but okay. <laughs> uh, but the Republicans blocked it, which they did, right? I'm sorry that we couldn't make the prices lower for you in all these different ways that the Republicans blocked over and over again. But for 96 percent of you, you're in pretty good shape, and I'm not sorry about that at all. Yeah, no, that would have been a good. That would have been good. I I wouldn't have said the thing that he said in the first place. Mm -hmm. Since they knew this was going to happen, mm -hmm. but it, assuming that they did, yeah, they, assume, of course they knew. There's every indication that they knew, and how would they not know? Um, some people had incredibly shitty plans mm -hmm. uh -huh. that weren't going to meet the standards for the Affordable Care Act. I, I think, and uh, to what degree are they culpable for that? Because here's what, uh, my guess as to how the conversation went. Hey guys, you know when we make the plans have more coverage, they won't necessarily have the same exact plan because they'll have a plan with better coverage. And somebody in the room goes, yeah, it'll be better, whatever. And then they move on. My right. guess is that's how the conversation went. And maybe that wasn't thorough as it needed to be. Right? I just mm -hmm. think I would have, you know, I mean, you can't get caught if you're honest about specifics. And I would have, to your point, I would have owned it from the start. 
the people in the private insurance market, 96% of them are going to get better coverage and it's going to be cheaper. Yeah. Better and cheaper. But to be and, fair, you know, I think make that, that point. that's, I think, what he tried to do earlier this week when he gave the non-apology apology where I he know, said... The ship, is, the ship has sailed on him getting caught. I mean, I don't think it's... Well, and that's why he apologized last night. Right. And so, so I think I, he was simply adapting to... He had tried several strategies. The media, at the very least, wasn't buying it. Whether or not the American public was buying it, the media wasn't. Because the media seems to have this idea, which, at least for me, doesn't seem to be true, that people have this huge amount of, I guess, uh, emotional attachment to their health insurance plan. Forget what it actually covers. Okay. I want the same one. Is that actually, I, I feel like that's just the media trying to stir something up. I think it's a up. fairly big deal for some people if they lose their doctor. If the plan change see that. means they don't get so the, the plan doctor. itself. Yeah, so there was a woman, with my plan. puppy. <laughs> yeah, there was a woman who was featured in a Wall Street Journal article uh, where she uh, was a stage four cancer patient. She had coverage uh, that, uh, she had a doctor at Stanford and at UC San Diego. Uh, now, it turns out, of course, they do the thing of like, oh my God, she's, okay, they're going to make her die, she's going to lose her doctors, whatever, right? Mm -hmm. All that kind of fear mongering. The thing, Progress looks into it. And uh, number one, it turns out she'd been paying, her family had been paying a lot, a lot out of pocket, mm -hmm. and they won't have to under Obamacare. And, but they were right about one thing she can't have a doctor at Stanford and at UC San Diego for two different things, or she can, but it will cost more, right? Yeah. So, Okay, yeah, so that happens, and that's why people say, well, I had this thing, and I, ha I had it, and I needed it, yeah. et cetera, right? But at the same time, I mean, like, I, of course I care a ton about her treatment. She's got stage four cancer, and apparently they did a great job with her. She's getting better, et cetera, right? But I'm not sure that you're entitled to, like, Stanford and UC mm -hmm. San Diego, and that if that costs a decent amount, that you should be outraged by that. And in fact, you'd already been paying a lot out of pocket which actually could get better if you just had the Stanford doctor. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's a system meant to accommodate, hopefully, the needs of millions and millions of Americans, not necessarily every one exactly as they want it. It's, right. But it, you did... You know, we're all annoyed when the president, any president, Republican, Democrat, whoever, they all do the same thing, uh, when they call out when they on the campaign trail when they use the specific examples. Right? Yeah. It just invites me to tune out. I know it does for you, too. You know? Yeah, I hate that. You know, I was speaking to Julie Albadondo in Edmond, <laughs> Oklahoma. Yeah, and she told me, and you're like, shut up. Okay. Yeah, Obama yeah. did that, that very well. And yeah, it, and it's bullshit. It's bullshit. I, it's just they took picked her out of a hat to make an example of something they exactly. wanted to talk about. Or they anyway. found her in a paper. It doesn't matter. But whatever it is, it's an anecdotal story, and you expect it in the campaign trail. Here, we're trying to govern public policy by nitpicking mm -hmm. anecdotal stories. Yeah, and it's a. I mean, the 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 seriousness of four to five, three to five percent of people who in the private healthcare market have had to lose their plan and pay more money, of course you're talking about that that still makes it that's still millions of people. Yeah. It's still a lot of people. So it's pretty easy to find those examples.